Christian experience laced with all kinds of disappointments because speaking is not the only thing you are mandated to do there are actions of obedience based on what scripture has given us and based on the rima word that comes by the spirit as a unique strategy for you if the nation of israel kept shouting before jericho in the name of jesus jericho you must go down they would have died for nothing beyond speaking a strategy was given to them and they walked in obedience and that's what brought jericho down listen to me i want to challenge you i have seen this in my visions and the word of god confirms it there are um, there is an onslaught of wicked spirits being released in this end time over ministries over men of god over families walking in spiritual ignorance will be a costly bargain in this end time hallelujah so satan sees that that lady that gentleman will rise to become the horn that exalts the family all of a sudden leads to the next one you will start seeing mysterious sicknesses have you seen people with all due respect who were say aa all of a sudden they now find out that they were ss for instance and they cannot explain where that came from or you find someone who has been healthy living a responsible life and the next thing they say you are having hiv hiv from where sorry you are having hiv that's the end of discussion or someone just begins to feel pain side of your chest anywhere and then it's it looks like child's play until they tell you sorry from what we are seeing you've been having cancer in the last three years cancer where did it come from i eat healthy i've done my best ladies and gentlemen this is more than a health issue there are spirits their assignment is to take you out of the way for the sake of those who will be blessed by your life but again i'm praying for somebody in the name of jesus you came for koinonia tonight if there is any sickness in your body whether you have detected it or not that is growing to become any blood disease or any cancerous statement in your life as sickness you are a man and it looks like a large prostrate is growing to become cancer or cancer breast cancer lung cancer i don't care what it is called i curse it now in the name of jesus I curse it now in the name of Jesus. Please sit down. I told you a story here years ago. This happened in Zaria. True story. A woman who was pregnant and in her dream, she would always see like monkeys. True story. Come, you know, to molest her and all of that. And she just shrugged it over true story she had a stillbirth as she gave out gave birth to a hairy child looking physically like monkeys ministry is like medicine you will see all kinds of things that you would not have believed except that it is right before you i have seen a woman who got pregnant her husband had died oh she got pregnant because a spirit came to molest her and physically she started getting pregnant and you see as a man of god all those problems is you they bring it to everybody just runs to you and say look just know what to do with me because this one is a spirit don't get into end time ministry if you don't have power you will make a mockery of yourself your family and the name of jesus are we together now yeah let's talk about sicknesses and disease i have taught you koinonia that sickness is an, a gradual administration of death upon a person now the way god designed his system let me repeat for your understanding is that everybody is given the privilege of one body per lifetime please do not forget this we are given the privilege of one body to host your spirit per lifetime lifetime meaning the period from when you are born until you finally transit out of this realm you are given the liberty to have one body per lifetime and maintaining that body is important for your longevity are we together now 
Yes. And one of the commonest ways that Satan takes people out of this realm before their time, knowing the laws that God created around living, is that he afflicts your body, listen please, so that your body deteriorates. Now there is a certain health requirement for your spirit to remain in your body. When your body deteriorates beyond that point, your spirit will have to leave, whether you are done with your assignment or not. So when Satan sees that this person, it looks like there's nothing we can do with that person, sickness comes into your body. And what happens is that it starts to deteriorate your body and it gets to a point where your body can no longer host your spirit. And at that point, you will have to leave. Hallelujah. This is what happened to the man Elisha. Even though he was an anointed man of God, you will think as anointed as Elisha was, a man who could heal anything, he died of sickness. It was sickness that killed him and the anointing was still in him. And that anointing was there in the bones and it raised the dead body back to life. Yet it killed the one, the one who had it could not benefit from it because there are rules of engagement. Are we together? They were bringing a dead body and the dead body fell and touched the bones of Elisha and jacked back to life. What a miracle. And yet the person, the owner of that body became sick until he died. Can I tell you this? If you entertain sickness in your body, it will bring you untimely death. Believe me. Satan is a stubborn spirit. If he administers a dimension of sickness and you give flimsy excuses around it and don't deal with it. When you are dealing with sickness, use every scriptural means to deal with it. The bam in Gilead, the power of the Holy Ghost, attack it every... That is why I will never teach you to ignore medicine. I believe in the supernatural. I will administer the supernatural till the day I see his face. But I am a responsible man of God and I will not teach people to ignore medicine. If your faith has not grown to a level where the power of God becomes active to keep you strong, do not feel guilty. Take responsibility and see a doctor. Come for koinonia and we pray for you while we all keep growing. Are we together now? That is responsible Christianity. Many Christians in a bid to practice faith without guidance and with wisdom have deteriorated their health in a way that it could be managed simple things that, and satan is an opportunist the moment he sees a loophole are we together now for one year you've been having severe pain around the heart doesn't matter what i just know plus jesus minus satan careless christian experience and many people embrace it that way until they tell you, ah, if you had come two years ago, would have been able to work on this. You've been having internal bleeding for years. You've not cared to check it. It is your responsibility to work in partnership with the word of God, to work in partnership with the wisdom of the spirit, to keep this body healthy enough for your spirit to remain comfortable as you serve God. Are we together now? Years ago, someone sent a text that he saw me dying. Said, my friend, please get out of my way with all that kind of revelation. Is it easy like that to die? Hallelujah. Many people say, I shall not die, but leave. They are already on their way to the grave because they do not know what it takes to make prophecy become manifestation the person who is saying i shall not die is dishonoring every parent dishonoring every father dishonoring everyone the person who is saying i shall not die but live is eating anything he finds in front of him even when he needs to or not the person who is saying i shall not die is not serving the purposes of god you are on your way dying for sure you see that now there are many scriptures that are connected to longevity, freedom, liberty from sickness. One is, I shall not die, but live and declare. That means if your life is not advancing the kingdom, you will be a victim in this end time. It's not a threat, it's a truth. Ah, 
there are people that God will not allow to die. His jealousy would defend them. They are too useful for his program. Too useful for his program. Hezekiah turned his face and said, God, you want to kill me? Remember, who will fund your project? Who will bring glory to your name? How many of us can stand and look at the spirit of death to the face and look at God who is the judge of all the earth and say, Lord, remember my work in Koinonia. Remember my partnership. Remember my giving. Rem how many people pray for apostles? Remember, it's a project. Show me a man who is doggedly involved in the program of God. I show you somebody who the devil will be forced to stay far from. Claiming blessings without the conditions connected to them is what will keep making a mockery of people. Are we together? I can tell you there are people who the God will never allow the devil to take their lives. Many children eat because they are alive. Many people go to school because they are alive. There are many preachers today who are comforted and have left the way of compromise courtesy their help and their partnership. No devil will take them out of the way. Hallelujah. I shall not die, but live and declare. Number two, it says, honor your father and your mother in the Lord. Is that in your Bible? That it may be well with you and that you may live long. There are many people who will stand and look at their parents to their face, insult them, insult every man of God, and they don't know they are programming death. They think they are expressing themselves. And before you know it, you are dividing your years times two. And the person gets up one morning and then he just says, a bike man just killed me. No, sir. All these things you call coincidences, there are no coincidences in the spirit. It's a product of intentional programming. As for me, I've made up my mind that in the name of Jesus, when my assignment is done, I will not die the kind of death that brings reproach to the name of the Lord. With all due respect to those who have done, who have gone, I honor them. Thank God they made heaven. But me, I've chosen the template of my own life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Believe it. Don't serve God in fear and live a defeated life. Ah, this body will not carry cancer. In the name of Jesus, his body will not carry. I don't know whatever name it is called, but by the power that raised Christ from the dead, if that same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in this body, I decree and declare, I will weary every devil and everything. This body must host my spirit for my lifetime as appointed by God. Hallelujah. Do you believe what you are hearing tonight? There are many preachers who have not taken out time to meditate on divine health, to meditate on long life. Let me give you a counsel. If you are a man of God and you've not sat down to meditate on these things, please do so. If not, your schedules will be the very reason you will go to the grave. Hallelujah. We've had roller coaster meetings from Enugu to Lagos to Abelkuta to Lagos and back here. After service, seeing people and doing a lot of things. You keep doing, you cannot fake this thing, oh. If this grace is not at work in you, one day you will just wake up and see that you are either in ICU or maybe you are just before the throne. And it's not like it's a vision, you are gone. Say amen. Hallelujah. You make up your mind intentionally. You don't say I shall not die because you are afraid. No, we are already victorious. If Jesus comes today to be absent in the body is to be present with the Lord. The advocacy for long life and health is not because of the fear of death. It is because there is much to be done for the kingdom and you require your body to host your spirit. Are we together now? Say I shall not die. Don't keep quiet. Oh. Say I shall not die. In the name of Jesus Christ. You come from a family where the devil kills people 
with all due respect people died before their time i like you this night while you are listening to me make get, let a holy anger rise in your spirit that it will be from me this untimely death this spirit that comes upon people and just waste their life there are those the moment they are getting to 46 47 48 they start becoming afraid moody and emotional because when you cross 50 from those families that is even a testimony hallelujah he gave them power gave them power Acts chapter 10 and verse 38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power he went about doing good and healing all they that were oppressed of the devil for God was with him Matthew chapter 10 and verse 1 give it to us please and when he had called unto him the 12 disciples he gave them power against are you seeing the pattern now unclean spirits to cast them out then to heal all manner of sicknesses and all manner of diseases he sent them with a message verse 7 as ye go preach saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand prove the reality of that kingdom verse 8 by healing the sick cleansing the lepers raising the dead cast out um, cast out devils freely you have received freely give when you read from verse 9 the next thing is talking about supplies it's always been in that order you deal with spirits your body i'm coming to the issue of supplies but my assignment is to speak to the body of christ there is a a need for a heightened awareness of the principles that truly make for health and longevity may god forbid that you wake up one morning and just find out that somebody you loved has gone i know that most of us here we've lost loved ones no problem there's nothing we can do we thank god that they are in christ but since you are alive you have a chance now to define your reality do you know there are people right now who based on the satanic programming they are not supposed to see december 31st they are alive oh they are already working now but they are part of the list from now till December, this one, let's try accident. If it does not work, try a satanic migraine headache. Oh, this one is pregnant. She's getting to nine months. Can we use it as an opportunity? This had delivery now. This can be an opportunity to kill her. And the spirit scheme it. That's why the Bible said no weapon fashioned. Weapons are fashioned. They are fashioned by studying your life. This man is a man of God. Most likely he will be laying hands on a lot of people. Can we program people with communicable diseases so that as he's laying hands, something will come upon him and kill him? This man is a businessman. The easiest way to kill him is to make him lose 10 billion naira within one month. What do you think? From there he will plunge into depression. He may run to a herbalist and on his way coming back, both him and the goat he carried will die on the way. That's the plan. Are we together? Yeah. And while all that scheming is happening and these spirits are planning from the realm of the spirit, all they hear is a sound like thunder. Shabakatoskiata. Pradoka paruska badika. Shadika paruske. Empregete pakatosa pragata. Makoske barusiata. Ah, you are there in your room, oh. You are there in your room. Listen. Jesus was not invited to hell. He entered. Oh, it's in your Bible. Nobody gave him any invitation. The Bible says he showed up. He just said it is finished. And the next thing they see him there, having spoiled principalities and powers. He made a public show of them, triumphing over them in it. Listen, one of these days, you will find yourself in a meeting where you need to settle some things. You will start praying on earth till you find yourself in the realm of the spirit. And you will see books with the names of your loved ones. And you will tear them into pieces. 
and said, this is what has kept this family bound. This is what has destroyed this family. Do you believe what I'm teaching you? Listen, the Bible says to deliver those who have been appointed unto death. A man of God once shared a testimony and I shared it here. I listened to him. He said somebody was supposed to take a flight. He missed the flight. 